Hello and welcome back, Sleepy Wusset here, and I have another miniatures video for you. In today's video, we're going to continue focusing on some fundamental techniques so that you can build better models. In this video, we're going to be looking at doing some thin gap and seam filling so that you don't have nasty lines running all over your models. So as you can see here, I'm showing exactly what we're looking at here on a sequitur, a Stormcast sequitur. So you can see what I'm referring to is these lines that are running like up the side of the leg and over the shoulder pad. Those are caused by when you assemble the model, no matter how flush you get things to get uh, together, you have two pieces of plastic going against each other. So there's a small gap here. In this video, we're going to be demonstrating on a GW model, but this is kind of a problem for all types of models uh, where you have uh, pieces joining together that you have to fill in that gap somehow. So this is applicable to other things. There are many different ways that you can actually fill these seams. I'm going to be showing two different techniques using two different products to give you an idea of kind of like the broad classes of doing this. Uh, first, we'll be showing how you do this with a green stuff as is being shown here, which is a standard two-part epoxy quite commonly used in modeling. This is my preferred uh, method for doing this, uh, just because I've done it more often and I find it a little bit more versatile. But the first step of working with this is we're going to have to take, cut off a little bit of uh, material of the epoxy and mix it together so that we can get activated green stuff. This is one of the downsides of this material is that it's hard to uh, cut off a small portion of it. So unless you're doing a lot of models at once, you're going to have some wastage. GW does produce a material that they call liquid green stuff. Um, you don't need to mix it together. I'm not sure if it's the exact same material. I'm not a big fan of working with it. It's a little bit crumbly, uh, I find, uh, because it's sitting in a pot. And it it's thin and has a lot of shrinkage issues, so it's not uncommon, even for really thin seams, that you have to do multiple passes with it, which just seems like a giant uh, uh, pain to me. So I prefer just using like a standard uh, neatite, um, uh, the, like the thicker material. So now that we have this mixed up, what we're going to do is uh, roll it out into some thin pieces because what we're going to be doing is basically working this into the joints. So this material, we're just going to take little pieces of it and use uh, metal tools to begin with and basically start stuffing it into the joints and filling up uh, the seams that we want to fix. One of the really nice properties of green stuff is that it's soluble with water. So to thin it out and make it not stick and smooth it, you can just put a little, you get your tools a little bit wet or your finger, and you can really uh, smooth and thin it out really nicely. The only, uh, one of the drawbacks of it, it does require access to the area that's going in. So some areas like underarms and such, it can be somewhat difficult to get in. But in general, I find it works very well. So this is going to have to dry. It requires up to 24 hours to cure, depending on the uh, weather conditions you're working with. And what we do with this after we cure it is similar to what we do after we let the other technique dry. So I'm going to kind of combine those together. And what we're going to do is jump into the other technique so we can show how that begins. So the other product that we're going to be using is uh, basically a plastic cement or glue. So this is not a super glue or a, a CA glue. This is proper plastic cement, the type of stuff that melts plastic when you work with it. What I have here is Tamiya's Extra Thin Cement. So what you want here is a very thin dilution that can wick into joints. Tamiya, uh, just to be aware, makes actually two different variants of this product. They both come with green lids. One's lighter than the other. What I work with is the standard. The other version is a quick dry. Because we're depending on wicking action, I've, I've not used the quick dry, but I'm a little bit concerned that it may start to cure before it gets fully into the joint. So that's why I use this, but it's just something to be aware of. Again, uh, also when working with this stuff, it is toxic and has nasty flammable fumes. So make sure that you're working in a well-ventilated uh, area the entire time. So what we're going to be doing with this is basically taking it out of the bottle on the little brush and running along the joint where we want to fuse things together. Just getting a little bit in there and uh, once it's started activating, if necessary, pressing the joint a touch together and letting it uh, dry like that. The major drawbacks to this technique and part of the reason why I don't use it more often is it doesn't work on very large gaps like you can fill an arbitrarily large gap with green stuff, with sufficient green stuff. This requires the two pieces of plastic to already be kind of in contact to work well. 
So any big gaps, this isn't going to work well. Also, this only works with certain types of plastic. So GW plastic, it will work with and some other types of modeling plastic, but I don't believe it works with bones plastic particularly well. And it definitely doesn't work with metal or resin. So this is part of the reason why I prefer G um, using green stuff for this is, is the fact that it can kind of work with anything. This is similar to why I prefer uh, CA glue over super uh, plastic cement for gluing my models together is because I don't have to have multiple different things that I'm working with depending on the specific circumstance. So we've let our green stuff either dry overnight or we've given like 15 minutes for our glue to com or cement to completely cure. And what we're going to go in is you can see here that for with like with the green stuff, we wanted to make sure there was enough of it that any shrinkage wouldn't cause it to fall into the joint. So we're going to probably have a little bit of excess. And with the uh, plastic cement, there's often like a little ridge from the melting process that you end up here. So we're just going to take some fine uh, sand, uh, sanding sticks is what I use, but you can use any type of abrasive, but like a, you want like 240 or higher for this. And we're just going to uh, smooth off the edge here. So this is kind of the next step of finishing. This can be a little bit uh, problematic for getting into some hard to reach joints. Hopefully those joints are not the, as visible and you went a little bit more gentle on the filling material. So it won't be necessary, but for like the big shoulder pads here and down the sides where it's really obvious, we're just going to sand this all uh, down. One of the things that's uh, common with plastic cement is that if the joint was a little bit wider, the first pass that you did doesn't fully fill the joint. One of the nice things is as you're sanding at that plastic dust that's coming off from sanding is falling into the joint. And this is the same thing. It's welded. So if the joint isn't completely filled, you can drop in a little bit more plastic cement and let it dry again and try and fill it in a little bit more. So once we have these both smooth to demonstrate the like difference in quality of what the uh, to not prepping things, we're going to prime these with uh, Vallejo Gray so that you can see what that looks like. So I just airbrushed this all on so you can actually see what it looks like here. So the first thing we're going to take a look at is the unprepped models here. So you can see on the sequitur down the side over the shoulder, there's this noticeable gap. This is the problem that we're trying to fix this gap won't really go away unless you put a lot of primer in which can cause uh, other details to be lost if you're not careful and this is going to be ac actually accented by doing things like shades and dry brushing similar to how mold, uh, mold lines will be so this is a problem that's somewhat difficult to hide and can be kind of frustrating to deal with so if uh, we'll see here on the green stuff version, I didn't get it completely perfect in some spots, but in general, it looks much better. Most of the joint is gone and it's completely smoothed out. One of the downsides to using green stuff you can see on the shoulder pad a little bit is it's a little bit harder to get perfectly smooth because of uh, the amount of excess material. I could have put a little bit more time into it and finish this off. And now we can see here where we use plastic cement. I had a little bit of difficulty getting some of the seam running down the side of the leg here completely filled. Again, I think this is more of a user error lock experience on my part than necessarily a limitation of the technique. But you can see, especially on this shoulder pad, we've gone a really smooth, it's really nice. It's going to paint up really nicely. So this uh, doing this type of gap filling, I think, is personally useful. Um, I wouldn't necessarily do it with every model that I'm doing. If you're doing a giant horde of clan rats or something, like you're doing 70 models and they're kind of supposed to look gross to begin with and rough, I wouldn't necessarily fill those in. But for like your big command units or units, like especially with like these metal plates that are supposed to be uh, smooth and well produced, you might. It's worth the time, I think, to really uh, kick up your paint job. Hope you found this video informative. If you enjoyed it, please give the video a like. If you want to see more content like this, please subscribe to the channel. I put out videos weekly. I also on my Twitch uh, channel regularly stream the projects and things that I'm working on. So if you want more of like a chill uh, thing with uh, some music to uh, watch while you're working on your own projects, you can always come over to that. Uh, but other than that, I look forward to seeing you in the next one.